So they've almost been caught. Krauswijk has done most of the chasing as well, Sean. Yes, well, he has. We can see he is the one who has uh, really closed this down because he was the one, I think, of uh, the most interest in trying getting back up to the uh, two men here, Amador and uh, Mikel Anda. And now it's going to be interesting to see what way they will work together because if they can really pull together most of the riders here, well, then they should be able to hold on at least that 233 as we go 50 kilometers to go. And uh, maybe they can pull that out if back in the peloton there's not really, you know, an open pace. We could see this gap growing to be, uh, uh, to be a bit more than this 233. At the start of the day, Jose Luis Arrieta was talking about whether it was now or never for Naido Quintana. He said today was the first of many nows this week because they had opportunities every single day. You'd expect on a day like today there to be somebody to attack Tom Dumoulin. And you'd expect, after all the work that Movistar had done today, the way they'd executed their plan, Naido Quintana has to attack, or at least try to attack, on this final climb, surely. Well, you would think so, that uh, he has to try something here. And uh, when you look at the uh, general classification, he has a lot to make up on uh, Tom Dumoulin, you know, 2.41. But let's not forget the time trial in so the very end of the race. And that's where he has to, you know, um, I suppose, calculate what he can, you know, um, what he can uh, lose to Tom de Milan again on this final time trial. So it's uh, it's certainly a minute and a half plus. And uh, so when you, you know, uh, when you calculate all of that, well, he has to start, you know, walking away at it and take time back. Will he take some today? I think he's going to definitely try. And the other days, of course, you just have to keep walking at it and try and just grind that down, that, uh, that time he has to make on Tom de Milan, just grind it down slowly. But... Anybody can have a difficult one on this final climb, and if you know if some of the general classification men really have a bad uh, a bad end on this final climb today, the they could lose many minutes. Franco Pellizzotti feeding Vincenzo Nibali in the red jersey with the navy sleeves. Adam Yates is still in this group. He's kept really well hidden today. We have hardly seen him. Another man to look out for. How's he feeling? Is today the day to gain some time and get into the top 10? He started 11th place. He's at 7.43. Remember, there's a place in the top 15 up for grabs because Ben Hermons did not finish today. Kenny Elisson also climbing off. Same to be said of Sean Deby. Nibbly calm enough at the minute to be able to choose the flavour of what he's going to have. Yes, uh, we can see that. He just had a look at uh, what uh, Pelazotti had in his hand. He just takes one out. And we can see the way they're riding at the moment. They're not pushing on here in this group, so it's pretty uh, easy for those guys to be able to do that. And now is the time, you know, make sure that you have plenty of food, plenty of gels, and also, you know, lots of drink here because when we get on to the next climb, if the battle starts, well, then there's not much time. The cars, you know, will be a long ways up off when the group splits there'll be riders you know scattered all over the mountain so the, the cars will not be allowed up and you have to just you know uh, plan that in advance philip dagen what a giro d'italia he's having hand up there from steven krausberg who's been battling on brilliantly despite breaking a rib in yorkshire something he managed to keep quiet until this weekend jan hurt doing a good ride today and the orange as well the strong czech rider Eros Kapeki is the man at the front. Behind him, Bob Youngles. Franco Pellizzotti protects Vincenzo Nibali. And here comes Ruben Plaza. Again, Orica Scott are going to work. And again, they're going to work for Adam Yates. It's because the gap's grown out to three minutes and eight seconds now. Tom Dumoulin at the moment won't be worried about Andre Amador or Steven Krauswijk, but those around him will be worried about their places on GC. And although I know that some people think it's negative, some people don't like it, that's the reason really why Trek Segafredo are riding on the climb, riding to keep Mollema's place. Some will argue, including our very own Brian Smith early on, that people should have just sat back and put pressure on Team Sunweb. Getting well organised in that group up the road. Not far from the intermediate sprint now, inside uh, a kilometre to go or so. 
Three, two, and one bonus seconds available. And those seconds have come in handy, I'm pretty sure, for Amador and Kralswick. Amador at 6.01. He's at the back of this group now. Doesn't look like he's going to go for them, though. Doesn't like anybody's going to go for them. Surprise you? No, not really. I think uh, Amador is just uh, you know, going to concentrate on this uh, final climb. And the small, uh, the small amount of seconds you're going to take there. But uh, again, it's always, you know, it's always six seconds. And they all count, don't they? They all count in the end. But um, yeah, it looks like that he's just uh, committed here to uh, continue on this move and this breakaway and keeping them as much as an advantage. And will he be the one to be allowed to go all the way at this stage? Will he be able to do that? Because he's in very uh, top company here and uh, it's... it's it's looking good here, 3.15, so they are, you know, but little by little, they are pulling out their advantage from this uh, main part of the peloton. Bob Youngles on the left-hand side. Look behind from Vincenzo Nibali as well. Nairo Quintana. Everybody checking where everybody is, surveying who's with them. Ruben Plaza's the man at the front, very experienced rider. And a changing of the guard in terms of who's doing the riding. Yes, and we can see there there's um, a lot of riders just uh, talking with each other, looking around. Nobody wants to pull here, and this is the uh, section out here in the valley. We can see it's you know pretty flat road, and uh, I think the teams are concerned if you put your men on the front and push on here, well, then you're going to lose them immediately when you get on to the final time of the day. So um, it's going to be an interesting one. It looks like Katusha wants to uh, take up the pulling with uh, uh, Ruben Plaza there, who wants to, wants to push on. And uh, they need to do that because this, this could grow out, you know, four minutes, four and a half minutes if they continue at this pace. Tom Dumoulin back to the car. This is why all the looking around was happening then, maybe. Dumoulin had put his hand up. A little bit of a chat. Didn't look like there was a mechanical. There he is drifting on. Now then, any idea what the issue might be here? Just a chat, maybe? Just a tactical chat? But they can do that over the radio, can't they? Yes, but it's much, uh, it's much easier to do it. And uh, in this small group, you know, we can see here, uh, it's not a big, big peloton where you have to go a long ways back. You can go to the rear of this one and move up pretty quickly. You're still on big roads. And, you know, to talk with the team directly, directly it's so much easier and so, uh, so much easier to understand it. And uh, it looks like Tom Dumoulin is just talking, what do we do here? And we can see they're just, they're just staying off here and not getting involved with the, with the pace of the front for the moment and to push other teams to make him do something. Katusha Alpacin and Orica Scott pushing on, and whilst they have a little look around each other, it's time for us to go and have a little look around at everything surrounding the end of today's stage with Juan Antonio Fletcher. Technical fast and long last distance from Umbral Pass, the last one of the three climbs that the rider will have to go up and down on today's stage. The queen one of the Giro d'Italia, and it's one factor very important and dangerous at the same time for the riders. It's going to be the tunnels. There are a few galerias all the way along that last descent, and that's the moment where the riders will be transitioning from a dry tarmac onto a very wet one. It's damp, it's dark and there's a lot of water leaking on those rocks because there's still snow and glaciers in this magnificent area in Vormio. So, lots of risk, lots of danger, and a lot of ambition for the riders to get this stage victory. So Juan Antonio Fletcher's take on it. Let's get confirmation of those points on offer at the intermediate sprint. 10, 6 and 3 for Dignan, Lander and Anton. None of those guys up there in the points classification at the minute. That's still very much the domain of Fernando Gaviria. Luis Leon Sanchez dropping back to this group now to work for Dario Cataldo. Catusha Alpacin and 
Ilnud Zakarim were one of the teams that Movistar were talking about today. Jose Rada singling out Amador in particular, and he's a man that's been getting better. He was excellent at Europa, remember? As Francois Bida on the left hand side wearing 13. The number traditionally turned upside down for Azure Desert is there and ready for Pozzo Vivo. Dumula back in the group. Yates still in this group. Pino, Nibali, Quintana, and the rest. Balkan Molima too. It's swollen, it's grown. And we're all ready to take on the final climb coming up right after this. Welcome back. Stage 16 of the Giro d'Italia from Rovetta to Bormio. Steven Krauswijk at the head of the race right now. Head of the race, it's being chased down. And Ruben Plaza is doing quite a job to chase it down. He's being helped out as well. Katusha Alpacin, Bahrain Merida and Astana are all involved. Well, for the first time in the race, they're going to climb again in the Val Monastero. They're going to climb up to Tubre and into Switzerland. Philip Dagnan's been in the breakaway, but he is done for the day. Ouch. Mikel Lander still in the group in front. He's with Steven Krauswijk. He's with uh, Amador. Anacona. And Jan Hurt. This is Ruben Plasser catching them. They've chopped off about 20 seconds since Orica Scott went to the front to start riding. Katusha Alpacin also there. There's Franco Pellizzotti, third wheel. The rider from Katusha, by the way, is Jose Gonzalves, the Portuguese. There's Jesper Hansen for Astana. And between the two groups on the road, there's 900 metres. Two minutes and 41 as we climb into Switzerland. Enter Switzerland in what four five kilometers time now to Muster. Another UNESCO World Heritage site. Seems that we visited them without stopping this year. Loads on the Giro map. This particular one, the Benedictine Monastery of St. John. UA Fly Emirates. Well, they needed some divine intervention if Rick Costa was going to win the stage today. He's drifted back. Hasn't been climbing anywhere near as well as these guys. Igor Anton is always a dangerous man, certainly with just a stage victory in mind. Andrea Amador and Movistar, now what do they have in mind? Surely Naido Quintana has to try and put to bed the top work that's been done by his team all day. For that to happen, this breakaway's got to stay away for a little bit. They've got to keep an advantage, and this is where every other team is putting pressure on them, and some web now. There's Franco Pellizzotti, 39 years of age now. Had his trouble in his career. A couple of years suspension, of course, for abnormal blood values. This year he is a very trusted domestic, the lieutenant of Vincenzo Nibali. Hansen's the man on the left-hand side in the turquoise working for Dario Cataldo. Looks as though he might be... Struggling a bit, in fact, he is, he's done. Speed between the two groups. Mollema travelling at 30 kilometres per hour there. Kraus fake at 23. A little undulating round here, though. We can't take that as gospel. Little bits of ups and downs before we start the final climb. Final climb itself, the Umbrail Pass, is going to be very, very difficult. This is where we've been over the Paso del Mortiroro, Paso della Foppa side today. Then the Stelvio from Bormio descending into Prato. We've been through the intermediate sprint and the road goes up from here. Climb proper begins once we're into Switzerland. Now Andre Amador, Movistar, they're losing their gap quite quickly here, Sean. Two minutes and 19, it remains a decent gap, but the rate at which they're knocking seconds off, is that going to be worrying Movistar? 
It's certainly going to be worrying, and we can see the reason why, because in the peloton, the riders that are pushing on there, uh, Ruben Plaza and uh, the uh, Katusha riders, they're really pushing on, and they're going to just ride you know, for a number of kilometres, and then their day's work is over, where the breakaway, they have you know, to continue on up this climb, and there's some of those guys you know, thinking of winning the stage, the other ones want to you know, keep an advantage as much as possible, Kreiswick, of course, the general classification, he wants to hold on to as much advantage as possible, but and uh, Amador and Ancona, they probably have other ideas in, in their mind here, other tactics, and so they are just uh, walking away from it, and uh, 2.15 at the moment, and you know, 40 kilometres we can see to go, and it's already kicking up quite, uh, quite a lot here, and you know, when you look at the, uh, the, the final climb itself, it talks about 13.4 kilometres, but it's much more than that if you start uh, taking into account what we have to do here in the valley, and this is you know, a real leg breaker before you get to this really difficult climb, the final one of the day. The Umbrail Pass, it's being touted as the three quarters of the Stelvio. Look at this, five hours, five minutes of racing already. Forget about the climb on its own. It's what's gone before that can also influence what happens now. And while we wait for that action, a chance to admire the pure natural beauty of this region. So the weather forecast for the Umbrail Pass, it's around three degrees warmer than it was on the Stelvio. A little bit of a wind blowing about, 20 kilometres per hour at times. And we're in the last couple of kilometres of Italian territory. And once we've climbed the Umbrail Pass, that is the border to go back into Italy. Right at the top of the pass. Who's at the front of the race? Hurt and Amador with Anacona, Anton, Krausweg and Lander. Lander did have three teammates with him at one stage. Asil Kirienka to do the riding in the valley. With Sebastian on the Stelvio. Philip Dignam for the second half of that mountain. And for a while down here in the valley as well. The Umbrail Pass will be taken on. The official classified point. Beginning a little further up now. What's happening here? Ruben Plaza and Dario Cataldo. I think that was something along the lines, in less polite language, and what are you doing? Yes, it's a, an interesting one. I have no idea what the reason, because we know why Ruben Plaza is riding here. Uh, to try and keep the uh, breakaway at the uh, minimal advantage as possible and then for Adam Yates to try something on the final climb and Cataldo there just calling, maybe some of the Royals want to uh, just have a, uh, have a pull over for a moment, uh, maybe that is the reason but we haven't seen and we haven't seen that and interesting one. José Gonzalves in the red of Katusha Alpacin at the front, just behind Ruben Plaza. Ruben Plaza has just had an earful from Dario Cataldo. Uh, Plaza responding, well, I'm only doing my job. I wonder if Cataldo's thinking about the other day when Orica Scott worked and worked and worked and then nothing came of it and it made the day faster and more difficult for the rest of those. Could have been a case of, oh, not you lot again. Would be a little harsh. Great to see a team taking it to everybody else. No such response from Franco Pellizzotti, third wheel. Cataldo, remember, the man in the turquoise jersey, fourth wheel, is at 8 minutes and 14 from the lead of Tom Dumoulin. Rather large group has swelled again here. Sebastian Reichenbach is returned for Thibaut Pino after he was dropped towards the, the top of the Stelvio. Two minutes and nine seconds up the road. They've lost almost a minute of the advantage they had. Steven Kralswijk and company. There's Jan Hurt on the left-hand side, really riding a good race, the man from the Czech Republic. Mikel Lander there. He'll be thinking what might have been for Team Sky. A winner on a corner after having already dropped back to maybe help Naido Quintana. Got back to the front. He's doing a great job again. I wonder if it will come out afterwards whether 
Quintana at that particular moment didn't have the legs to attack when Movistar were ex executing that plan or, or whether they changed their mind about the tactic for some other reason? Well, yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, well, I think, first of all, you know, the distance from the finish, I think that was going to be the mm. problem. And when you see what they have to get through in the valley here, you know, there was a, a lot of flat section and then this, you know, gradual uphill. I think they were all concerned about that because they have been climbing now, although the gradient is not a lot. It's, it's still 38.8 kilometers in the finish and they have been going uphill for a long time. I think that was uh, the problem to uh, get onto the final climb. So. I think the distance uh, to get into the final climb was a bit too much um, from the uh, uh, the Stelvio pass, and uh, that was the reason we did not see any action from uh, Quintana. But on the final one here, I think there's a lot of opportunities on this one. It's, you know, it's a long one, over 13 kilometres, and the gradient is something that Quintana, you know, will really like if he's if he's riding well, he's feeling good. He has to attack and he has to try something on this one. Nairo Quintana in the centre of the shot as you see it. Pink jersey towards the back, he has Laurence Tindam in front. I'm just wondering with Cataldo here, as we see those unique bidons that have been produced with the image of Frankie the McCaw on, to remember Michele Scarponi as we went over the Chima Scarponi today. Just thinking to Dario Cataldo a minute ago. I wonder if he was angry that teams that didn't have the pink jersey were riding and maybe he thought that more pressure should have been put on some web here. Um, well, it's an interesting one, of course. Um, you know, there's riders in between as well, let's yeah. not forget. And, uh, They're going to protect their own position, aren't they? Yes, and uh, that is, uh, I think that is the reason. And, uh, Kit uh, K Cataldo, surprising that he you know, was talking with Ruben Plaza. And, uh, you know, Ruben Plaza have orders. And if he's got orders from the rector sport, he's to ride on the front as far as he can. And uh, that is going to be, he's just going to ride on the, you know, go to a standstill and then he will just pull off and uh, make his own way to the finish and uh, you cannot uh, you cannot see Andrew Ryder for doing that you know that's his job and uh, when you have the team all you have just to you know leave the riders get on and uh, do it here we go again bit of a messing about here Krasvik trying to get everyone to ride I think he's also coming back to his team car a little bit of a misunderstanding with Amador two minutes and four they've lost a minute from the gap Coming over to the border, we leave Italy and we head to Switzerland. And it's uh, a quick trip to Switzerland. Thankfully, passport's not required here. So there's the border. And we head towards the town of Mustaya. Following that, it's the Umbrail Pass. And the Umbrail Pass, which should start in around four kilometres time. As Sean said, we've been climbing though for a while. This is the breakaway of the day, as we're in Swiss territory. The only foreign excursion on this Giro d'Italia. Mikael Lander riding on the front because he knows his own stage win possibilities are on the line now. They've been quite content to let the rest do the work. But Katusha Alpacine and Orica Scott in particular want to chase this down. Well, 36.4 of the 222 kilometres on this Queen stage of the Giro d'Italia remain. We started the day in Rovetta, we've been over the Passo del Mortirolo, we've been over the Passo dello Stelvio, and we are heading up the Umbrail Pass, the Giogo di Santa Maria, to give it its Italian name. Heading up to Italy once more for a 19 kilometre descent back into Bormio, where the final 100 kilometre loop of today's stage began. Today's stage that has offered us so much. I tell you what, for the next few kilometres, they'll have better roads, won't they, in Switzerland? <laughs> We've had some awful services throughout this year in Italia. It's amazing how quickly it changes when you get over the border. Yes, you can see here, really good surface in Switzerland, but again, a lot of the roads we've seen on the... Uh, Route of today's stage, a lot of new surface, but uh, also a lot of you know ones where it's a little bit uh, not 
the best of surface, but certainly they have a, a good surface for a number of kilometres here until they get on to the, the final time of the day. And uh, you can see 151 at the moment. It is going to be uh, a difficult one here for the breakaway um, because on the final climb, I think when we see the uh, uh, the attacks, hopefully from Quintana, uh, that will you know be a difficult one to go all the way to the finish. Uh, 150. I don't know if it's going to be enough. You need somebody who was really good and he's, he's landed that good that he can hold off uh, just with under two minutes all the way to the finish with still 25k to go. Yeah, and we haven't even started the classified part of the climb yet and another 15 seconds off the brakes advantage goes. Tension is building. Stephen Kreswijk will be disappointed because good work that he's done today. Some of it is being absorbed. Now, this breakaway... Remember, Mikel Lander took the Chima copy, didn't he? Courtesy of Velon, we've just had some data in. The last four kilometres of the Stelvio for Mikel Lander took him 13 minutes, 46 seconds. Average speed of 17.4 kilometres per hour. His 60-second peak power, 393 watts. Average power for that almost 15-minute effort, 309 watts. Lander putting the numbers out. What does he say for the final climb? 35 kilometers remain. The Swiss section of the Alps and the 100th Tour d'Italia visits. Remember, today we're heading to Bormio. We've had some important stages finish here, remember. 1953, the very first ascent of the Stelvio was Fausto Coppi. Double win by Charlie Gaul in 60 and 61. Eric Brökenkorn in 1988. Gilberto Simoni, Gibo d'Italia, he was the stage in uh, winner in 2000. Last time we finished in Bormio, the little prince was crowned. 2004, Damiano Cunego became the king of the Giro. One of his four stage wins that year. Still Gonsalves in the red of Catuccio Alpazzini. Just behind Ruben Plaza, grimacing as he continues to ride. Edward Bravazzi still in the group. Patrick Conrad at the back for Bora Hansgrohe. And after his earlier attack, remember TJ Van Garderen there as well. Davide Formolo in the green for Canadel Drapak. Naido Quintana, the man everybody's watching. Naido Quintana immediately gets the pink jersey of Tom Dumoulin. Two minutes and 41 separate them. There is Domenico Bozzovivo as you look to the other favourites. Top of your picture there, 1-5-1 in the red jersey, is Ilno Zakarin, the Russian. Zakarin, who's had the odd disastrous incident on this Giro d'Italia, but has stayed up there. He's fifth overall at 4 minutes and 24. A look out for Vincenzo Nibali, as well as Thibaut Pino. They're in this group too. Adam Yates. Gates is attempting to climb into the top ten as Kralsweg pushes on. Road rises and Steven Kralsweg attacks. The minute nobody can stay with him. Long, long way from here, Sean, but I'll tell you what, kudos to Steven Kralsweg. He comes good in the third week of the Giro d'Italia. He loves this country, he loves this race, and he is prepared to lose it big style in order to gain hugely. Yes, well, he is going at an early stage, but again, he's got to try and get on uh, with the business here because I think in the breakaway, there's some of the riders just not uh, giving their best here and trying to get yeah, as far up the valley to get onto the, uh, the, the, the toughest part of the time um, uh, in the best state possible and just meaning spare your energy. And mm. that's the reason Tridesweek is going out here, but we can see uh, all the riders coming across. Landa looks like he's uh, trying to uh, get across there. Amador also chasing him there. And, this breakaway is starting to split up big time. Amador's following at the moment. Anacona's marking Anton and saving energy. Well, there's a, a real danger for Moby Star here that all that work, all of that effort is going to come to nothing because Anacona is slipping back. Amador is up the road. Only Amador up the road. Well, Anna I think Corner is there at the moment, Sean. Sorry, I think uh, Anna Corner, you know, he maybe have all those here just to start uh, taking it a bit easy mm -hmm. and uh, just rest up a bit and uh, Quintana, but 
It's a bit early yet. I think he has to get further up the road here because with 33 kilometres to go to get onto the most serious part of the climb, the climb itself is just you know over 13 kilometres. Um, so yeah, he he's going to get onto it, but will he be far enough up for Quintana to create the damage to get ahead of the other big favourites? And uh, we can see that uh, Amador is trying to uh, trying to push on here. It's, it's really interesting now. I think that's where the tactic of uh, Movistar is going to come in. What they what they're going to do here, we can see, and a corner just yeah, really not pushing on at the moment. Not pushing on. He's allowing Jan Hurt to help now, and a corner part of me behind. There is Igor Anton with him. Anton, remember, only interested in the stage win here. Previous stage win at the Giro d'Italia came on Monte Zoncolan, remember. That's when he was at Movistar. Back in the peloton, all eyes on Naido Quintana. All being pulled back. Well, all smiles in the commentary box. Not too much feeding going on there. Brian Smith brought the ice creams. Ice creams, sweets. Short of nothing up here. Short and out, as we say where I'm from. 32 and a half k's to go, and we're going to start the Umbrail Pass. 13 kilometers really really steady nine percent maximum goes up to 12 percent fairly early on in the climb and this is how we start it one minute and 39 orica scott and katusha alpacine have brought back plenty of the gap that was twice as much as it is now there's jan hurt in the orange the check rider looking for what would be a big welcome stage win for CCC Sprandi Polkovica. Landa and Krauswick, the most advanced men on the road. Mikael Landa, Steven Krauswick. 32 kilometers. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What's happened here? Bike change? Real problems. And he's changing his jersey. Tom Dumoulin, oh no! No, no, no! Dear, oh dear, oh dear! Problems. And I wonder if this was one of the problems before. He needed a natural break. Obviously, a cameraman realised that. Panned away as quickly as possible. And at this stage in the race, Sean, he must be in dire need of that. Yes, um, and surprising that uh, when he was talking to the car, that's the question, was he having the problem there, a stomach problem, which went on for you know a long time here, and we're getting very close to the climb now. Surprising. I reckon that, yeah, he was trying to hold on, but uh, not possible, and just had to uh, you know, take off his jersey and go. Oh, dear. Unfortunate, wasn't it? Poor Tom Dumoulin. Well, that's what's one that's going to be replayed and replayed, I think. Now, what happens here in the peloton? This is Andre Amador. Obviously, no one's going to attack Dumoulin while he's doing that. No, I don't think... Um... And we're not... I mean, we're not on the road to do anyway, but surely... That, ah, he's back on his bike now. Whatever needed to be done has been done. I think they will just keep on riding at the pace there and maybe even knock her back a bit in that group of uh, the big favourites and uh, they'll all be made aware via the director sport team pretty quickly and we can see here Ruben Plaza still pushing on here, you know, um, certainly not waiting up anything big time and he's just, you know, finishing finishing his effort here and uh, pulling over and that, that's all for him. Over for Ruben Plaza. Remember Tom Dumoulin the other day waited for the mechanic, the crash bottom meet of Naido Quintana. I realise that social media, by the way, is about to go crazy. As long as he's not ill here, as long as he's all right, that hopefully will remain a funny incident at the Giro d'Italia. Now Moby start taking it up. Oh, dear. This could be interesting. Oh, it's Zacharin! Well, that is not the dumb thing. Ilno Zacharin attacking whilst Tom Dumoulin was attending the call of nature. We're not going to hear the last of this, Sean. No, certainly not. And uh, 
Yeah, it looked like that they were starting to just look at each other and uh, wait about and uh, allow Tom Duvalan to get back into that group where he was before he stopped. But that Karin, um, he has other ideas here. He's definitely pushing on, but is there anybody going to uh, react out of the peloton? It looks like that uh, everybody's just holding off a little bit for the moment, although we can see here Movistar wanting to push on and we can see Tom Duvalan. Is that him in the background there? He's in the car still. He's in the cars because we just saw him with his car a moment ago. Now, Zakarin, is he, he's not exactly being shouted down by everybody at the minute. Anybody looks towards him. I wonder if there will be a gesture there. Well, the caravan's just gone down the commentary box as if he gestured with that horn to say, hang on a minute, that's not the done thing. There is Gorke Aguirre. The pace is on here. It's been launched by Zakarin. Quintana's just radioed in. Pelizotti just radioed in. There's a look around, and Tom Dumoulin. Oh dear, oh dear. He is a long way back, Sean Kelly. Yes, he An is. An awful. I, I suggest. I mean, he must be ill. He has to be. He has to be suffering here from something. Well, again, you know, it's. Uh... It's a day when you have to take too much when you have to take so much liquids in. Sometimes you take too much, and that can upset your stomach. And of course, you know if you have it a bit too cold as well, sometimes it can upset the stomach uh, uh, quickly, and you have to go uh, to the toilet, as they say. And uh, yeah, uh, he's a long ways off there. I thought he was on the tail end of the cars. We can see ten dams waiting up from here. But uh, there's a big gap, and there's riders getting uh, dropped out the rear of this group uh, all the time, and that's going to be the problem because the commissar is going to, you know, not allow the cars close to this group, and uh, he's going to have to make it all on his own with his teammates. So first of all, Katusha Nino Zakarin, then Mobistar, and now Bahrain Merida are going to have some explaining to do, I think. Well, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's the one where. There were teams riding, of course. We did see Katusha riding, so I think Zakarin is going to say, well, we were we were pushing on the peloton for 15, 20 plus kilometers uh, when uh, Tom Dumoulin had to stop. And uh, the same, uh, we could see Ruben Plaza. He continued on, but he did not continue on for long. He was pretty much finished for the day. But the other teams here, we can see Pelizotti starting to push yep. on here. That is you know, uh, new power at the front of the group. Well, an opportunity to put the pink jersey under pressure. And how's he going to react? Whether that was just an awfully timed nature break, or indeed Tom Dumoulin is suffering from some sort of illness or problem. If it's the latter, then we may say come to fruition on the climb as well, because if the pace goes high, they really didn't put him under that much pressure on the Stelvio or the Motirolo. If he's under pressure here, then of course we'll see the answer, won't we? Yes, well... This is going to be a difficult one. We can see here he's just, you know, working away after trying to get back in. Tom, uh, Tom de Milan has just making his own. Now we can see Tem, Ten Dam has finished his effort. He has got nothing left, and uh, it's going to be a, a big effort for him. But he cannot try and throw it down too quickly because if you do that, well, then you're going to pay big time. You have to just slowly try and uh, get back to that group where he was originally with. Tom de Milan is on his own. Behind the ambulance here, slipping and sliding. It doesn't look up for the pink jersey. Two minutes and 58 to the race lead. He is losing over a minute on these guys. I remind you, at the start of the day, this man, Tom Dumoulin, eight grand tours into his career, led the Giro d'Italia by two minutes and 41 seconds from Naido Quintana. At the moment, to Quintana, He's losing one minute and 20 seconds, half of his advantage. The Umbral Pass still has 11 kilometers to go to the top. If Dumoulin is as good as he said he had been feeling, interesting to see how much he can limit his losses here. Pelizotti riding for Nibali in the meantime. Well, all the action of the Giro d'Italia and one of the most unusual incidents in recent years. We know that necessities have to take place, but not at that stage, right at the foot of the final climb of the day. Poor Tom Dumoulin, who has then been attacked by Ilnud Zakarin, attacked by Bahrain Merida, and Movistar as well have put on the pace. And I know we had the debate last week about the police motorbike, about everything, but 
Is this not different, Sean? The pink jersey has to be re respected? Well, I think it's a little bit unfair. They should have a you know, weighted up. And uh, if he's sick, well, then, you know, uh, he's going to pay further up the climb. Yeah. But if it was just a, uh, a call of nature, well, you know, learn to have that little bit of time. And surprising that, you know, the riders did not uh, uh, t talk to each other and mm. decide to ride for a little bit and allow him to get back into the group he was with and then go on from there. And let's not forget, Tom Dumoulin did knock off the uh, the effort when uh, Quintana crashed the other day. So you would you would expect some respect for the other riders. There will be a lot of deb debate about this one. A lot of debate to come. In the meantime, let's concentrate on the mathematics. And it's going backwards for Dumoulin. He's close to one and a half minutes now behind the Quintana group. And it isn't just Quintana who stands to gain. They all have a common enemy now in this group, don't they? Pelizzotti riding for Nibali, who also wants to take back time. Dumela at the moment riding for his Giro d'Italia. And of all the ways he could lose the pink jersey, this would be a travesty. Up the road in the meantime, Anton is drifting 52 seconds behind. Mikkel Landa up the road, Steven Knauswijk with him. Well, it's hard to compute what's happening here. Such is the unusual nature of the incident. Such is the lack of expectation of something like this happening. The Giro d'Italia, certainly this particular pink jersey today, is being played out by something that is unheard of in modern cycling, at least. Yes, well, I don't think we've ever seen that in a big tour. Uh, I've seen it myself in some races, one-day races, of course, uh, but uh, in, a, in a situation with the race leader at such a late stage in the, uh, uh, of, the, of the day, uh, surprising to see that. And we can see here, Mobistar are you know, not... Uh, not letting up at all. Nobody is really up. The general classification, when you look at Quintana, you look at uh, Pino is the one who hasn't you know, made any move, but Nibali, his teammate, of course, uh, Pelizzotti has been pushing on. Uh, Zacharin was the first one to, uh, uh, to push ahead. And when you look at the general classification, you know, the second down to Zacharin, who was fifth, even uh, Volko Malema, uh, they're all very close. So they're all going to, you know, get into a position now where to uh, go for the win this year is between them if Tom Dumoulin does not manage to make his way back and it doesn't look like you know he's making any inroads at the moment. Inside the final 30 kilometers up the hairpin bends of the Umbrail Pass which is being taken on for the first time in the Giro d'Italia. It's not just the climb though we have the descent as well a few tunnels included there the last 19 kilometers of downhill and Movisar have pulled back Andre Amador to work for Naido Quintana. They've seen that Dumoulin is in trouble and they're trying to take the bull by the horns now. All in to try and bury the Dutchman. Remember, it's not just about getting the advantage and deficit in their case back, it's about building an advantage also for the final day time trial. Dumoulin at the minute has managed to make sure the gap isn't shifting. He's not closing it but it's at one and a half minutes. How's he looking, do you, Sean? I know it's hard to tell, but how's he looking? Well, he doesn't look uh, look great at the moment, yeah. and uh, one and a half minutes when you see the powers up front and, you know, Amador here now is starting to push on. That is the problem because there's so many of the general classification men with teammates here. Nibali also the teammate uh, in this group, and that is going to be the problem for Jim Milan. To limit the losses, uh, it's going to be a real difficult one for him, and for me, he doesn't look majorly uncomfortable, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a complicated one for him to you know, keep at uh, keep at a distance where in the time trial. And let's not forget, today is only the first day of many difficult stages to come, and when you make this big effort today on your own, and even though it's on a climb, still with 28 kilometers to go, when you're out there on your own, it's so difficult, and we can see here he is struggling majorly. Well, just behind him, Gorke Zagirre on the wheel of Tom Dumoulin. He slipped back from the leading group. Dumoulin at the moment at 1 minute and 20 seconds from Quintana. So he's pulled 10 back. Is Tom Dumoulin about to be dethroned as the leader of the Giro d'Italia? It's not beyond the realms of possibility. He had a 2 minutes and 41 second lead today. 
Quintana took six bonus seconds on the day that Dumoulin waited for him when he crashed. And as Herbie Green tweeted us to say, Quintana crashes, Dumoulin waits. Dumoulin has to stop. Movistar attacks. Shake of the head there. Not a happy man. No doubt that he's angry. We saw signs of nervousness earlier on today. We don't know. This could be something that happened on the rest day. This could be something that's carried over from yesterday. They might have known that he was ill. Or this could be something that's just happened now. Dumoulin said he's been climbing better than ever before. And the big headline in the paper this morning was, nobody scares me. The minute it's not nobody, should be nothing. Because it's an incident beyond the control of the race that has put him in the position he's in now. And it's allowed Franco Pellizzotti to start setting the pace. It's allowed Andrea Amador to come and do the same for their respective leaders. Pellizzotti for Nibali's third wheel in the red jersey. Amador for Quintana, who's on the wheel in fourth position as we saw it. Just behind Nibali. Igor Anton will be the next to be caught. Signs of encouragement for Dumoulin for now, Sean in that he's managed to get almost 15 seconds back. That's limiting the losses now, but we remember there's been no big attacks from any of the leaders from this group, so it's not as if he's on the way to a full recovery. Uh, no, I think, and uh, we can see there, you know, the ones who are doing the riding, they're going to ride until you know, they have nothing left, and they're just going to empty the tank for their teammates, and then uh, we should see the, uh, some of the, the, uh, the, the, the leaders of that team pushing on then, and that is going to be the problem for Jim Milan. You know, there's so much uh, rider power out front, but he's working quite uh, OK at it. And when you look at the times, that was uh, the real teller, because when you look at Jim Milan, you know, he looked like that. He was pulling faces there a moment ago, but still he is uh, working away quite well and 28.1 to go. And, you know, this is uh, the top of this one is, what, uh, 19... Uh, 19.5 kilometers to the finish, so he has a, you know, a still time-wise he can do it, but has he got it, has he got enough? It's going to be a big, big one to close uh, this gap down, but he could limit his losses, as you say. At the moment, the time checks are looking good for him. Very good, in fact, as he gets another couple of seconds back. But remember, there's only one rider setting the pace on the front here. It's basically Pellizzotti against Dumoulin. Igor Anton, the next to be caught. Well, we're never short of a talking point or two on the Giro d'Italia. Never. And cycling sometimes does this to itself. We've had beauty, splendor, excitement all day. At the minute, if you're being devil's advocate and you want to ask a question, you've no shortage of questions to ask either, because should people have waited for Tom Dumoulin? That will be the question. Whatever happens today, we're going to see overnight. And I'm sure there are plenty of different responses. Here is the pink jersey at the minute. Whatever's happened has happened for the moment. He needs to carry on riding. And it's as if Movistar are trolling him here a little because Isekir has gone back and sat right on his wheel. Colombian fans on the side in pink. Will it be their man in pink at the end of the day? There is Naido Quintana, fourth wheel in this formation. It's Pellizzotti, the man from the northeast of Italy, setting the pace for the Italian hero from the far southwest in Sicily. Vincenzo Nibali, the defending champion. Naido Quintana just on the radio there. 27 and a half to go. Pellizzotti and Amador working together now. And they are putting the pink jersey in trouble, who is slipping and sliding since the last time check, do another 10 seconds. It was looking better for the Dutchman, but there's a long way to go in this climb. And the bad thing about this climb is the gradient is steadily horrific. It's consistent at around 9%. And after a day when we've been up the Mortiroro, albeit from the, in inverted commas, easier side, and the mighty Stelvio, again we head above 2,000 metres.
Well, the Nudzakarin who launched that attack that was then continued by Bahrain and Movistar. The chaos of the situation, I think, will allow the teams to probably point the finger at each other and say, well, we were just following on, it had been launched. Dumoulin slipping to 2.38 behind the break. 120 now behind Quintana and once more the fact that he's isolated lack of teammates isn't good for him 10 down didn't last too long for him what a ride again from Andre Amador a winner and a corner still there for Quintana again on the radio that's twice in the last 500 meters Sean maybe he's being told to wait maybe he's being told to go Still too early for him, or is this situation so good they should just keep riding? Well, I think uh, we can see Amador is uh, starting to suffer, but uh, again, it's uh, a bit to go on this climb, and uh, he's going to be allowed to ride as uh, far as as far as possible. And he can just, you know, turn the pedals no more, and he has. He just have to keep working on it, and then we can see uh, Pelizotti is also there, of course, and he is uh, going to ride and. Um, it's going to be an interesting one for the big uh, favourites there. Uh, the Quintana, Thibaut Pinot, Nibali, Zacharin, Molay, all of those who will be the first one to attack here at this group. Amador and Pelizzotti. Now, we just had a tweet regarding the, the incident, the wait or not incident. Sean Yates, the former director sportive at Team Sky, of course, former British champion, absolute super rider back in the day. He's just tweeted to say, at Eurosport underscore UK, they should have all pulled over instantly, and then he would have got straight back on, and the race could continue properly. Yes, well, that, is just, that would be the perfect way. Unfortunately, the, uh, some of the riders and uh, director sportees as well, and the director sportees have a big call on it, mm. because they can see everything is passing. Maybe but the riders didn't know why he dropped back. They could have thought he was dropped, no? Well, I think uh, they would be able to, you know, uh, relay to the director sportee very quickly and get information. But it's the director sportee in the car. Uh, you know, he has full view. He's, they, they all see that's what happened for Tom Dumoulin. They could have ordered their riders immediately. And, of course, uh, Sean Yates, being a director of sport team himself and a rider for many yep. years, I think that would have been definitely the call. And this one, I think there would be a lot of discussion going on about it. And I think, yes, it's, it's, it's a bit unfair the way they went about it, the uh, general classification men and their team. Yeah, and because there was not one single team really getting together at the front, a lot of finger-pointing could probably be allowed because they can say, well, you know, Zakarin started it and then... Bahrain Merida pushed on, now Movistar are riding. It's a domino chain of events, isn't it? And one little spot to set it off, it's difficult to stop. This is Dumoulin in the meantime, he's gaining again. Little bit of a tug of war here. He's one minute and 15 behind Quintana and the rest. In the meantime, Dumoulin two minutes 24 from these three who are leading the race. And amid all the drama, it's easy to forget what a good ride Kralsvek, Lander and Hurt are doing. 300 metres between the front of the race and the peloton, 800 metres back to the Maglia Rosa. In terms of the stage win, Sean, the minute, where would you put your money? From this second group on the road? Um, I... With the favourites, of course, Quintana and Nibali, everybody? Well, uh, it's a difficult one because we're 25.9 uh, uh, kilometres to go and this one tops out at 19.5, uh, so there is... Uh, Still a lot to do here on this climb, and uh, if the general classification riders, some of them really want to push on, well, then the uh, the advantage might not be enough. But it's looking uh, it's looking good for the uh, three leaders out front. But again, how much have they got left? Because they've been out there all day, and this day has been a real, real test for them, or a real killer day. So they could start as they get further up the climb, they could start tying big time. And we still yet to have a favourites attack from the bunch as well. If that happens and people start to follow, you imagine the time gap could come down fairly quickly. We shall see. You can just see first little camera shot that allowed us to appreciate how steep this road is on that last shot. Cars being held up at the front. Dumoulin, Izaguirre, and the winner of the stage to Mount Etna, Jan Paulantz. Now Vincenzo Nibali on the right-hand side. Naido Quintana just behind him. Domenico Pozzovivo in the blue, white and brown. And Balcom Molima in the group as well. 
Inud Zakarim was there. One oh three between the group on the bottom left as your screen here on the Umbrail Pass. And those just approaching the centre now. The rest of the favourites minus Dumoulin. And Dumoulin, well, he's gaining again. He's getting better and better on this climb. 110 now from Quintana. Mikel Landa Meana goes on the attack. He's wanted this stage since the start of the day. And at the moment, he's away in the search for the Trofeo Torriani for the winner of the stage. He's taken Cimacopi and Mikel Landani, as he's nicknamed, holding on to the drops in the style of Marco Pantani there, riding away from Jan Hurt, and the first to really crack is Steven Krauswijk. Yes, and uh, we can see Krauswijk there, you know, just walking away at it, but again, it's still a, quite a bit at the top here. Well over five kilometres still to go, and uh, is Krauswijk, uh, is he finished? Is he you know, uh, really after uh, burning all his energy? We have to wait and see, and we can see Landon wants to push on because he you knows the group is coming up quickly, just over a minute at the moment, so uh, that is the urgency. He has to go a bit further out than he would like to. Now, the onus is on Mobby Star to work, you would think, at the front. Now, they have the biggest numbers as Franco Pellizzotti has been dropped. It's now down to Andre Amador. Second wheel, Quintana waits. And a corner has gone from this group. Adam Yates is still there on the back. Davide Formolo is there. Quintana, here we go, here we go, Nibali to attack, Quintana to follow. As soon as Amador was done for the day, Nibali, Quintana, Pozzo Vivo and Inno Zaccarin. Catalo drops, Jungles goes pop out of the back as well, and Thibaut Pino is a long, long way to the front here. Here he is making his move, Sean, in the white. I think he's looking all right, maybe just caught out of position. Adam Yates towards the back, it's Davide Formal in the green who has to close the gap. So first casualty from this group is Bob Youngles. It's been a good ride from him so far today, survived. Yes, well, he has survived well, and uh, we know Youngles, of course, he doesn't like that sudden acceleration. He's just a powerful rider, so he's going to try and keep walking at it, and we could see him getting back into this group again, as we can see. Polka Malema, Thibaut Pinot, Adam Yates also just losing a bit of ground here, but getting back in, and Quintana, you could see, the moment Nibli put in the attack, Quintana over the top and said, well, anything you can do, I can do also. Well, Dumoulin, after getting to within a minute of Quintana and company, desperately goes for a gel as it's another acceleration from Nibali out wide. A little look around, there goes Quintana on the inside. And Quintana pushing on, another gap opened up, only Pozzo Vivo can follow here. Only Domenico Pozzo Vivo able to follow. Inno Zaccarin, and it's looking like another jour sans maybe for Thibaut Pino. Couldn't cope with the immediate acceleration. We're still five kilometers from the top of this climb. Bit of a tailwind here as well. So, Vincenzo Nibali in the red, Naido Quintana in the navy, and just behind them, the small figure of Domenico Pozzo Vivo in the white, brown, and blue. Zaccarin. Looks strong a couple of times. Remember, it was his first attack at the start of the day. And he's making his way across as well. Any support for Davide Formal on the road, though, via Rocha. It's his nickname. As Nibli looks around into the eyes of Quintana, who does not even move fully focused on the road in front of him. It's Quintana on the pedals again to go. The minute the gaps to Dumoulin aren't changing too dramatically. We're talking a minute and seven seconds right now. As it stands, Tom Dumoulin would still be the leader of the Giro d'Italia. His lead, however, would be cut to one minute and 30 seconds. But there's a long way to go yet. All the talking points to come overnight now. Second group here with Thibaut Pino leading on the left-hand side in the white as we go back to a very lonely-looking Maglia Rosa. If you're just joining us, a little recap. Tom Dumoulin had to stop to answer the call of nature on the side of the road. It was a rather dramatic one. 
and there was an attack by Inno Zakarin shortly after. That was then followed by Bahrain. That was then followed by Movistar, who continued to put the pace on up this climb. Dumula has paced himself back from a minute and a half down, but he's losing time again now, Sean, once these favourites are attack. In the meantime, Lander is keeping his own advantage, the leader of the race, to a minute and three. Yes, well, we can see there the... Uh... The favourites that are in the front, Quintana and Nibali, uh, Pozovivo, uh, Zacharin has made it back in. They're uh, just looking at each other and we could see there Nibali looking into the face of Quintana. Nobody wanted to commit and to, you know, to give it a 100% here. And, you know, they're still uh, almost five kilometres to the top. It's a long ways and I think uh, they're all afraid of each other. If you commit here and start pushing on, well then you risk to be attacked by the other ones. And we can see Nibali there just right in the front, giving the elbow flick to get the others to come round him. And it'll be interesting now to see, will they start sharing the pace setting here? All four. Zakarin, Nibali, Pozzovivo, Amador has been dropped. It's now Quintana. Dumoulin, fifth group on the road. He's now 1 minute 15 seconds from Nairo Quintana, defending in his advantage very well. He's caught Pelizzotti now. Dumoulin must be absolutely fuming. He's got plenty of built-up aggression to use. It's whether he has the legs and how his body is feeling. If he really is ill, and it wasn't just a very poorly timed stop, And he's surviving pretty well so far. There is Mikel Lander, and this is the gap now. He's open on Jan Hurt. Lander with a ride for home there. Steven Krauswijk, despite the fact that he was extremely, extremely courageous to take a big risk today, he's slipping too. Zakarin, Nibali, Pozzovivo, and Quintana. And they've opened up a good 20 seconds on those other favourites behind. Bob Youngles, Thibaut Pino, Bauko Molomer, all suffering after a hellish day in some of the most mighty mountains in the Alps. Adam Yates is there, as is Davide Formolo. Further down the roads, the pink jersey, Tom Dumoulin. Whatever happened before, Sean, he's dealing with this very well so far. Yes, well, he is dealing really well, you know, considering he's been alone for a long time and he's still just working away out of there and uh, not losing anything major and uh, uh, fighting uh, bravely and it'll be interesting to see if he can keep uh, this up uh, we can see up front the, the, the four leaders are starting to work together but they are not you know pushing on majorly for the moment and uh, tom dumoulin could you know turn out at the end of the day maybe holding on to the pink jersey if he can really you know put in a big effort in the final a uh, number of kilometres to the top of this climb and then get on to the descent, of course. That's another thing on your own, but he's a good descender. He's, you know, he's not going to lose a huge amount unless he is, you know, really under pressure here and starting to suffer. You can lose a bit more, but he's uh, looking good still there, uh, considering he's chasing all alone for a long time now. Well, this is the easiest part of the climb now. It kicks up after this again. Chasing group on the... 6 to 7% slope, then it kicks up to 10% again. Now, Sebastian Reichenbach is there for Tom Dumoulin. Dumoulin going at such a rate. Reichenbach will attempt to hold the wheel for a moment. Another beautiful climb. We've been treated to... It's almost been like an Attenborough documentary, this today. Stunning. Mikel Landa, twice a winner of stages on the Giro d'Italia two seasons ago. And you can see the pain etched onto his face here. He's keeping his gap. He's on the 9.2% section. Still a good three kilometers to go to the end of the climb. If anything, he's increased his lead by a couple of seconds to Quintana and the rest. He can look down at the hairpins. Surveyed the damage he's done. 
Now, Zakarin here in the red for Katusha Alpacin. Zakarin started the day in fifth position. Four minutes, 24 down. He stands to gain. Quintana stands to gain in time. At the minute, doesn't stand to take the Maglia Rosa. Remember, he was two minutes and 41 down from Dumoulin. Nibali in the red and navy there from Bahrain, reigning champion of the Giro d'Italia. Nibali began the day riding for Bahrain Merida at three minutes 40 in fourth position. Domenico Pozzo Vivo stands to gain more than most. He started the day in seventh at four minutes 59. This man stands to lose. Oh, and he's a minute and a half behind now. Is he tiring? It certainly would be understandable. Remember, there's all the stress as well. I guess that sometimes that can help, Sean, if you get the little bit of adrenaline flowing and everything. And But, but it's a long old climb to keep that going. It is a long climb, and uh, yeah, he's been a long time on his own. And uh, we can see him there, you know, still looking, uh, still looking OK. Um, we can see the groups here. Uh, this group of Quintana, Nibali, uh, Pozo Vivo and Zacharin. It looks like that uh, uh, Bob Jungels is uh, walking quite well there. He has him inside and he's about you know, 15, 17 seconds down. And uh, yeah, Tom de uh, it looked like a long way down the climb. He was going to lose a stack of time, but uh, you know, he's defending very well. Virtual standings are as this with Dumoulin, who would lead the Giro d'Italia by a minute and eight. Pino would be third at 2.05. Nibali would just be two seconds further back in fourth at 2.07. Zakarin fifth at 2.51. Squishing together at the gaps at the top of the overall general classification. For reasons that we haven't always enjoyed or liked, this Giro d'Italia has been enthralling from start until now so far and the mountains don't end here okay it's the queen stage but we've got another man in stage to canazé tomorrow then we go to ortizé the dolomite day and it continues all the way through monte grappa on saturday time trial sunday we're going to be glued to this for the next six days approaching the top of the climb approaching the final 20 kilometers Dumoulin has Cataldo with him now. It's in these two's interest to work together, but what is left? It's clear that Dumoulin is starting to lose time more dramatically, Sean. He's at 140 from Quintana and the rest, as they themselves increase the pace. Yes, well, we can see, you know, they are uh, pulling together, they're working together, sharing the pace in the front. We can see Quintana there. He's on the front for the moment. He rides 150 metres, then Nibali takes over on a climb. Yeah, the drafting is not as advantage as it is on the flat when you're going at a very fast pace, but still, you know, it's uh, it's still an advantage. And Tom de Milan, he's been riding and catching riders on the climb, but they have only been sitting in his, in his slipstream and they've given him no help whatsoever. And it's, it's not surprising that he's starting to lose a bit. And we can see here uh, still quite a bit for Tom de Milan to get to the top because 21.5, uh, and that is for Land out in front, and the rest are further down. So uh, the distance to the top for the uh, uh, for Tom de Milan is a bit, uh, quite a bit further back down the mountain. Wow! As one of our viewers has just suggested, is this the day where professionalism fully takes over any sort of semblance of respect for a leader's jersey in a Grand Tour? Is cycling changing? One of these things always happen. It'll come out in the wash over the night anyway. Nothing to detract so far from this man's ride. He's tiring though, and they're gaining behind. 55 seconds for Mikel Landa, who's two kilometers from the top of the Umbrail Pass. Sky's plan is one that has worked so far today. Four men in the breakaway. Trying to will himself on there, nodding away, Mikel Landa. They can see the next man from the break up ahead. Jan Hurt is there. Nibali just with another acceleration. Again, Vincenzo Nibali's looking good here. Again, I think he's been riding a better Giro d'Italia than what results so far have suggested. Looking a lot better than this time last year. And the rivals are more difficult. And there is plenty of graffiti on the side of the road for him, and even an inflatable shark there. Russian fans for Inud Zakarin. 
The man from Tatarstan has national support. No shortage of Colombian fans for Naido Quintana either. Remember, we're on stage 16 and Italy still hasn't had a stage win. Has had nothing to cheer about in this Giro d'Italia so far. At the minute, it stands to be another Basque win. But Pozzo Vivo and Nibali could provide something behind if there is a move towards the end of the climb here or on the descent. At the minute, it's looking OK for Landa. And for Dumoulin, we're talking 1 minute 45 seconds down now. It's getting nervously close to just less than a one minute advantage for Tom Dumoulin. Sean, can you see a situation where Dumoulin loses the jersey here today? Well, it could very well happen, and uh, we can see there in the last number of kilometres, uh, it's starting to slip away from him. He was fighting brave, br bravely, and um, we can see there, you know, there's quite a bit of wind as well. It's turning a lot, so there is times where you're going to have a headwind on this climb, and uh, that is a real killer when you're alone for so long on this final climb of the day, after a real difficult day into the, you know, the final week, a three-week race, all that, you know, takes its toll. And any little bit of help from other riders, and that's what the uh, four, five leaders at the moment we have, that's the advantage. Like, they have been just, you know, sharing the pace setting, and that little bit of recovery time, it means a lot, and advantage is just uh, growing. Uh, for the for the other general classification, and unfortunately for Dumoulin, just losing second by second at the moment. It's hard on Dumoulin, very, very hard. We're seeing the very best ride away. There is Mikel Landa, rider from the Spanish Basque country. He feels extremely Basque. He's got the Basque Icorinha, the flag, on his sleeve. In the meantime, the man from Boyoca in Colombia. And there is Mikel Landa. A little look down. Just had a message from our colleague Magnus Beckstedt, who reminds us about the altitude as well, Sean, above 2,000 metres again. Magnus saying it affects bigger, taller riders. That might play into things, especially for Dumoulin, the longer the stage goes on here. And the higher up he gets. And he's losing time, almost two minutes down on the road. Remember, his lead before today, 2.41. Twenty point three kilometers to go. And a good thirty seconds between the two groups of favourites as well as Jan Hurt is a passenger on this group with Quintana, Pozzo Vivo, Zacharin and uh, Nibali as Nibali goes. Vincenzo Nibali. And that looks like it's gonna cook Zacharin fighting to keep going and Nibali good enough to keep pushing on for now. Quintana's the only man who can get up to him any close and close the wheel. Quintana now, what does he do? First of all, he sits on. Nibali feeling good enough to have a bite. And you cannot fault this man's courage here. Vincenzo Nibali approaching the top of the Umbral Pass. So Nibali, this is the moment he went right from the back of the group. Good strong dart, Sean. Took a while even for Quintana to get on the wheel. Yes, it was a, a big attack there. We could see Quintana. He did uh, make a big effort to get back in there. And, uh, um, and Nibali is going to, you know, really push on here. Will they be able to hold off the other ones? Zacharin, of course, is fighting there, as we can see. Landa, the advantage coming down. 24 seconds at the moment. has come down rapidly with the attack of Nibali. Nibali and Quintana putting Landa's possible stage when in danger. 500 metres to go to the top of the climb. More King of the Man points on offer as well, and whatever Mikel Landa can get in terms of stage when he's certainly up there in the fight for the King of the Man in jersey. Little quick of a look and uh, a couple of words exchanged between Nibali and Quintana. They have a few seconds on Zacharin in the red, Pozzo Vivo in the white behind. Remember to Dumoulin, it's over two minutes now. Two minutes the gap, and poor Tom Dumoulin, two minutes further down on the road, he is getting 
tired, extremely tired as he comes here. There's no lack of fight or courage there. He will have a lot of fans, a huge amount of sympathy out there. Of course, it's not the first time that it's happened, but is it becoming a more common occurrence? Certainly in these circumstances, it doesn't happen every day. Less than 20 kilometers to go. This is the third group on the road with Formula Yates, Krausweg. And look at Nibali, really motoring on. Really, really trying to put the nail in the coffin of those behind. Looks around again, Quintana not giving him a real turn. And they're 15 seconds from Landa now. Landa to come over the climb. He'll take the king of the man in points, but Sean Kelly with just 14 seconds. Is it going to be enough to take the stage? Well, it's going to be a very difficult for Landa, considering he has, he's been out there for so long. He's suffered a lot in the last number of kilometres, and you can see the way he's getting to the top of this one. When you look at Nibali Quintana, especially Nibali, you can see there's fight left in him. And, of course, this descent as well, you know, 19.5 kilometres down, and we know how Nibali can do that. But Zacharin fighting bravely to get back in with Pozzovivo also, you know, is just starting to get back here. But uh, 10 seconds at the moment, it's going to be very difficult for the, the lead on the road well drama entertainment excitement even a whiff of scandal maybe today Tom Dumoulin dropped and he's not far away off losing the pink jersey now remember he led by 241 today he leads on the road by 220 Okay, out there, in chase, in pursuit of Mikel Landa, we have Naido Quintana, Vincenzo Nibali. They're the 2014 and the defi winner, pardon me, and the defending champion, respectively. Inno Zaccarin, who crashed out within the top five last year, and Domenico Pozzovivo. Chasing group at 116 now. And these guys are going to slip down in the top ten. Well, the strength of feeling from a lot of you watching on at home is pretty strong. Most not fans of the episode that we've seen. I'll tell you what, there's no shortage of drama, though. Nibali smells that first Italian stage win, doesn't he? Well, certainly on the descent, he's the one who was the real specialist, and uh, he can go down uh, so fast, but uh, with comfort as well, and you know that is so easy to do. And we can see there, uh, Pozzovivo, he was just about back in there, but not able to stay with the pace, and looks to be the one who was lo losing oh, the stage. Oh, he was cracking, he was cracking, really, really having a bad moment there. He's close to the top now, 50 metres to the top, 10, Dumoulin is over the top. He is holding on to the pink jersey extremely, extremely weakly. He'd have an advantage of 20 seconds as it stands. Vincenzo Nibali, seven seconds behind Mikel Landa, and we're on the descent. 16.5 kilometers to go. It's almost all downhill here, and the riders have to have their wits about them. Descent that includes a few tunnels as well. And this is Tom Dumoulin in the pink. A lot of people around us open mouthed about what have happened today, Sean. We had we had this first half of the stage where all the racing was on, and then we had this affair out of nowhere. Reminiscent a little bit, I think much more dramatic than Laurent Jalabert in 2000. This is a, a crucial start of the stage, and of course, right at the foot of the final climb, eh? Yes, well, I think uh, there will be a lot of uh, talk about it, and... Uh... I feel that uh, Tom de Milan, he got uh, an unfair deal there. It would have been so easy, as we mentioned, uh, that uh, 
the big favourites in their teams, they could have knocked it off for a moment, allow it to get back onto the, the group that was in on the tail end of it at least, and then take up the racing from there. But yeah, that is bike racing, and we're going to have this ongoing discussion yeah. because Katusha are going to say, well, we were riding for many kilometres in the valley. Mm. Uh, uh, so yeah, where do you where do you start? And you know, it's 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 a really difficult one. It's a debate that you know there's no real solid answer to. Yeah, it's not cut and dry, and we do admit, although at the minute we do tend to feel very very sorry for Tom Dumoulin, it is extremely nuanced, extremely nuanced. Fourteen point five kilometres to go. Eight seconds of an advantage for Mikel Lando, who's desperately trying to hold on. Vincenzo Nibali, as you would expect, is driving the descent behind. Naido Quintana is there as well. As it stands, Tom Dumoulin will be holding on to the pink jersey only just. And if he can keep this gap, his chances for victory at the Giro d'Italia are not over. Remember, with the time trial still to come, it is his rivals who need a buffer on him. Let's not forget that at all. But we are not denying that it is hugely dramatic. Gaps are starting to open up behind. And look, Mikel Landa is almost caught. They're on the same stretch of road, and we have the first opportunity for a while, maybe, for an Italian stage win. Stage 16. They've never gone this long without that victory. And Nibali is going away. Quintana tries best to follow, and in following, a gap is opening up to Pozzo Vivo. It was seven seconds, it says six seconds. It feels much less here. That's been an amazing exploit by Miguel Land in the meantime. Whatever happens. Nipoli's opening up little bits of road. Quintana, no slats going down either. He's showing that. He's following all of Nibali's lines very well. Well, he has to he has to try and you know, keep Nibali inside, but we can see Nibali is just pulling away gradually, and uh, he's uh, such a great ascender. And we can see he's really using that talent uh, to uh, to the full now and pushing on. And uh, let's not forget as well, there's you know the bonuses here as well, which uh, Quintana will be pushing on for, but. All, it's, all eyes on this man here, the pink jersey, Tom de Milan. How well can he descend? We did see there that he was still in a uh, pink jersey uh, situation, but can he make a descent? Because the way Nibley is going down here, he has to lose a bit more time. And the first little suggestion of him getting a little bit further away from Naido Quintana, the way he came out of that hairpin, pedaled out at furious speed. Dumoulin, in the meantime, is gaining time back. Dumoulin has 10 seconds back on what he lost at the top of the mountain. Oh, when the Giro organizers designed this stage, they wanted drama, they wanted beauty, they wanted excitement. They're getting lots and in huge doses. Nibali's almost on the wheel now. Vincenzo Nibali knows this climb, knows this descent. And the Umbrail Pass, both up and down, is proving decisive on today's stage, at least. And remember, Nibali started the day at three minutes and 40 down. He stands to gain not only a possible stage, but also in the fight for pink as well. This could be the kickstart to his own Giro d'Italia challenge. Oh, well, so close there. So close, Nibali. From the angle we were shown, it looked as if he was going off. Yes, well, he did get a slide there, and, uh, you know, amazing. We can see here the wet throw now again. Skinny hot forward. <laughs> My God, this is uh, scary stuff. Wow. I'm holding onto the edge of my seat here in the commentary box. This is one for the history books. 11 and a half kilometers to go. We've had all the previous drama, but this is adding to it now. Vincenzo Nibali takes the lead on the road. It almost ended in tears a moment before this. Up, over we go. Straight past Lander and straight down the mountain. One minute and 20 on Molima, Pino and company. So Nibali stands to gain a lot in that respect already. For Tom Dumoulin, it's two minutes and 14 he's getting back in his respect. He started a day at 3.40. That's a very big chunk of that advantage to go. Miguel Lander is the intruder in this, if you like. 
he's been out the front all day long and you have to feel for him as well there is Naido Quintana dealing with this fairly well too into one of the many tunnels on this descent from the Umbreil Pass and Paul Steven Krauswerk has been so courageous today coming up to that same little section of wet road Adam Yates is here, Formolo, Pino, Jungles, Monoma. This is the group at 1 minute and 20. For now, the excitement subsides, but it could come at any moment. Tom Dumoulin, descending pretty well himself at the minute. That balance between accelerating out of those curves, when to apply the brakes, the lines you take, it, it's not just skill, it's also courage, intelligence, mind, lots of things at play, Sean. It's absolutely fascinating watching these guys. Yes, and there's also freshness, um, you know, how you're physically feeling as well is important uh, to read, you know, further down the, uh, the road, going into the corner, how tight it is. And, uh, yeah, you know, you just have to uh, take a line right, but the wet conditions, that is, you know, uh, a danger one, because when you get that wet condition in the corner, you have to be really careful, you can slide out so quickly. We did see Nubli there, he took a big slide and looked like he was going down, but his bike handling as well just got him out of it. And uh, now the problem for Nibley, of course, he had Mikel land in his wheel and he's just going to tag on there and follow. And But Nibley has no choice here, he has just to keep going. And uh, as we can see, Nibley again, you know, a just... A little misjudgment, he, he's putting everything on the line. Here. Well, when you're really pushing like this, you know, he had to stay on the brakes a little bit too long. And when you do that and you started to go, take your corner when you can slide out and that was the problem there for Nibley but he's pushing to the limit here but when you have you know, somebody in your wheel it's a little bit of a distraction but again Nibley had just to focus what's out ahead. And remember for a huge part of this descent they are descending the same section of road that they came up when they climbed the Stelvio. This is this dodgy moment again for Vincenzo Nibali. Left, right, oops. And that gold-plated bike of his almost ended up on the ground again. He's with Landa here. Pozzo Vivo is behind in the second group with Naido Quintana on his wheel. Or at least attempting to hold it. Oh, he's drifted a bit further back than that, in fact. He just needs to keep his head to Pozzo Vivo here because he stands again a lot, doesn't he, from seventh place at the start of the day. Yes, well, he certainly does uh, has to keep his head and just keep his focus and he can see out in front. He has uh, Quintana. He has him in view a little bit, but uh, for a small lightweight like Pozzo he's doing very well because uh, the way Nibli has been going down on the last uh, seven, eight kilometres plus, he's doing well to, you know, to keep at, uh, the position he's in. Tom Dumoulin, for any problem on the descent, is doing enough to stay in the Maglia Rosa. Now, this is the part that they'd certainly already climbed earlier in the day. Again, a little correction from Nibali. Sprints out, Lander holding onto his wheel. Remember, the stage win's still in the air. But the overall picture is looking much better for Nibali. Quintana following close quarters behind. I wonder what the gap is on the road between these two now. You'd say it's 10 seconds, wouldn't you, at least? Well, uh, it's difficult. We haven't really seen the overhead shot of where uh, Quintana is at the moment, but I would say 10, 12 seconds would be the max. Vincenzo Nibali at the front in the red. Still wants a little bit of energy here. Of course, it's not just the legs that take the calories out of you. <laughs> Needs to keep his head too as Nairo Quintana pedals on for dear life. A terrifying, dramatic descent of the Stelvio. Nibali, enough to pedal on. Yep, there is Quintana behind. I'm calling that as 10 seconds. 6.7 kilometers to go once we get back to Bormio as a little rise towards the line. We've all seen the finish, remember? Exhilarating this. There is the Colombian winner in 2014 of this race. Controversial on that day on the Stelvio as he went away and took time when it would supposedly be neutralized. Questions not just around him, also this man today. Ilnud Zakarin. This is Steven Krauswerk. Everybody's on the edge now. Everybody's in difficulty. This is theatre at its very best.
They've dragged out a minute on 30 on the group that you just saw a minute ago on your screen. So Lander sharing on the pace. Of course, Lander wants a stage win. He keeps Nibali there, then there's only one rival to beat, not Quintana as well. Here comes Vincenzo Nibali on the right hand side. Remember, these two former teammates as well, let's not forget this. They know each other very well, don't they? Yes, of course, uh, yes, with uh, Astana, two teammates there of the past, and uh, mm, I think Lander maybe might be that little bit faster in uh, two home sprints, but again, with the difficulty we've had, Lander being out there, and uh, you know, to keep uh, keep ahead of Quintana, it uh, keeps uh, things a little bit more complicated because if you come to the sprint and uh, with a two man, it's yeah, certainly in a better situation with three. We are approaching the final five kilometers of an enthralling stage, and Tom Dumoulin, on the day that the Giro d'Italia touched the sky on the Stelvio is seeing his pink jersey challenge to send into hell. Another little correction there. And he trails by exactly the amount he leads now. Two minutes and 41, it grows again. What is left in the tank as it stands? Naido Quintana will be going into the pink jersey. Well, of course, Quintana has a 10 second to make up on Nibali, so there is that 10 second uh, there. So uh, it's going to be very tight, as we can see there. But uh, amazingly, Tom Dumoulin, he's done a magnificent descent, considering he's been on the mm. climb all on his own. Uh, and on the descent all alone, he's still you know, putting in a real strong performance. Well, many of you at home clamoring the words of respect for the Maglia Rosa. What's done is done now. We'll hear about it all overnight. The Giro will be as dramatic as ever as it is each year. But at the moment, a stage win is up for grabs and maybe even a new pink jersey. As it stands with these time gaps, Dumoulin, if he can't recover, is about to lose pink. Inu Zakarin. You have to say whatever happens, the stop by the side of the road is the reason, because the way he rode up the climb was nothing short of fantastic on his yeah, own. Yes, well, I think uh, from the from the moment he stopped, uh, the ride has been fantastic, and uh, it's going to be a real tight one, as you said, with the bonuses uh, on the finish line for the first three riders, and of course, Quintana uh, in position three at the moment, out on the road, it's going to be a matter of seconds who is going to be a leader at the end of the stage. Mikel Landa alongside Vincenzo Nibali. Vincenzo Nibali, remember, starting the day at 3 minutes 40. So no suggestion that he could go into the Magliaros at the moment. But he's still pulling out time on uh, Quintana. Quintana running a very cool, good race here. At the end of the day, he could have the jersey. Inu Zakarin stands to gain quite a bit of time as well. And what has been a beautiful natural setting, Tom Dumoulin will not want to remember this particular visit to the Alps. He'd ridden the perfect Giro d'Italia until now. Into the town of Bormio. The last time we were here in 2004, Damiano Cornigo was the winner. He took the race overall. The big names such as Coppi, Gaul, Brukink and Simone have also won here. Less than two kilometers to go. Mikel Landa added his, list to the, his name to the list of huge riders who have won the Cima Coppi on the Stelvio. Can he take the Trofeo Torriani in the stage win as well? Or is it going to be a first Italian win? The drama has not stopped boiling all day. And these are really good, wide, brand new roads now. One and a half kilometers to go. Some technical turns in the approach to the line, which we saw earlier on today. Around 100 kilometers ago when the loop up the Selvio, into Switzerland, up the Umbrail Pass started before we got all of that unexpected drama. Flam Rouge, one kilometre remains on stage 16 of the Giro from Rovetta to Bormio. 222 kilometres in total, five and a half thousand metres of elevation gain. We've had the Mortirolo, we've had the Stelvio, we've had the Umbrail Pass, and now we have a question of just a few hundred metres and a sprint for a stage win. It's Mikel Lander, 
His chance is destroyed by the police motorbike down on Blockhouse. Vincenzo Nibali, the reigning champion, looking to gain time in the overall, looking to take Italy's first stage win. 10, 6 and 4, bonus seconds available on the line as well, which are going to be good too for Naido Quintana. We expect to finish third here. A stage win, though, between these two. Lander on the left in the black. Two Giro stage wins already to his name. Both of those coming two years ago when Alberto Condador took the final victory. And here is Vincenzo Nibali, a two-time winner of the Giro. There's one more turn still to go yet. Nibali sits on the wheel, primed to do it for the Italians, who are ready to explode with joy if they can take it. There's that right-hand turn. Here we go again. He goes left and swings left to the game once more. There is Lander. Through the chicane they go. And here is Nibali on the right-hand side. He's going to sprint for the line. Lander on the left. Nibali coming through the middle, and that's it. Italy have it. Nibali's done it. The shark has bitten. And after 16 days of drought, Italy had their stage win. Nibali takes it. His defence is alive. The Giro is alive. And Naido Quintana could well move into the pink jersey we couldn't have asked for a more dramatic day it hasn't all happened for the right reasons as Pots of Evil finishes fourth but my oh my will we be talking about this stage for years and years to come and Sean Kelly as Il Nodakarin comes across fifth the wait is on to see if we have a new leader but wow what a win for Vincenzo Nibali well, yes, what a, what a final descent and what a day's racing and uh, eventually as yes, uh, Italy get their win here and uh, we could see that uh, Lander put in a great battle, uh, you know, leading it all the way in the final kilometre but uh, Nibali just had a little bit faster in that uh, final run to the line. Well, here's Davide Formolo, good ride from him. 103 as the time's ticking down. Remember the last time check we had. Tom Dumoulin was out of the pink jersey. The question today is, can he make up time in the final couple of kilometers? Coming of age right again from this man, Davide Formolo stands to move up. Really well done from the Canada Drapak youngster. Here's Barco Mollema. Oh, big time loss from Mollema, Youngles and Pino. 130 down, where's the pink jersey? A time trial over the final 500 metres to keep pink. Remember, 2 minutes 41 seconds was his lead over Quintana. Quintana's picked up four bonus seconds, so call it 2.37. And Tom Dumoulin has a chance now, has a chance to hold on to pink. Rides around the final corner, 1.50 to go. Whatever happens, this has been heroic. This has been brilliant for a man who has every right to feel hard done by. He's going to do it. He's going to save it. Really well done. And the good news story today comes from Tom Dunoulin, who holds pink to huge cheers. Chapeau. Great ride. Dumoulin's over. He remains the leader of the Tour d'Italia, with the stage going to Vincenzo Nibali. But wow, do we have a Giro d'Italia on our hands now. The gaps are minute. Dumoulin leads the Giro by 31 seconds from Quintana. Nibali is within 1 minute and 12. Pino is fourth at 2.38. Zacharin is at 2.40. But Tom Dumoulin shows class, character, courage and still leads. Nibali wins stage 16. The Italians have been waiting for a long time for this. The first victory of the 100 Giro goes to Italy's top modern cyclist. Michel Lander in second, Naira Quintana third on the day with fourth and fifth for Pozzo Vivo and Zaccarin. Now